everybody. This is Symphonic Elk, and right behind me, my dog, Bowser. Oh, his head. Yep, that's how we roll here in the Elk household. Anyway, welcome to my 31st, 32nd. I'm getting old. Well, uh, one or the other. I'll figure it out and come back at you with a little bit more information in the future. But, it's going to be a comic book haul. Anyway, before we get started, as we always do, we have a trivia question. So, last week's trivia question was, uh, what magazine featured uh, Jeff Smith's bone um, that came out of the 1990s? And there were a number of answers that I got. Some of them may have been kind of right, like Wizard of Mia. You know, third, uh, Bone 13 and a half came out. Um, it was a supplementary piece right, that you had to send in for from Wizard. I'm sure that there was a little bit of, of Bone here and there in the magazine. But the correct answer, and the one I was looking for, is uh, Disney's Adventures. So it was the uh, small digest, looked like a reader's digest, but for uh, Disney, um, used to be able to pick them up like on the aisles at a supermarket, the checkout aisles. Uh, I have some examples of it and I should have pulled them but yeah it's not a professional around here so anyway the item that you could win was Venom, a Death Trap and The Vault we had three people who answered the question correctly Rated Raw Tennessee Fish Daddy Iron Monkey Fist. So, what I'm going to do is I'm wadding these up. Wadding these up. Wadding these up. I've got my trusty I Love Intercourse Pennsylvania mug. So, I drop one, two, three in there. We shake, shake, shake. Shake and bake. I'm going to pick one out. <sighs> This is the winner. He has won before, and he has won again. Rated RAR. All right, Rated, I will send it out to you <laughs> in the near future. I already have your address, so you don't need to worry about contacting me about that. Um, Eddie R., you won last week. I still haven't received your address or anything, so if you could send that to me, that would be great. Uh, anyway. For next week's, or I guess this week's trivia, next week's answer is sponsored by um, one of my favorite channels, A Poor Man's Comics. And the items that you could win are Comics Greatest World Ghost. I believe this is the first appearance of Ghost. Um, not an Adam Hughes cover, although it kind of looks like it, uh, but Adam Hughes pencils inside. So that's great. And a Ben Oliver store exclusive from Forbidden Planet in the UK. Uh, All-Star Batman number one. And so, like I said, the question is brought to you by Poor Man's Comics. And it is as follows. What is the first published artwork of Amanda Connor? Doesn't have to be a cover. It can be inside. That's part of the question. The second part, and you can answer one part or both parts, and you'll get one or two entries, depending on uh, A, how many you answer, B, how many you get right. Um, the second part is also, what other famous comic personality, comic book personality, is Amanda Connor married to, or was married to? Not really sure. I assume still is. So, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, questions again. Amanda Connor's. What's her first published artwork? Second, who is her husband? So I guess I've given that away. It is a it is a man. Um, and yeah, email those answers to elk.prizes at gmail.com. And yeah, we'll uh, see if we get a couple more entries. I think my question um, last week was too difficult. So yeah, anyway, thanks to A Poor Man's Comics for the, the question idea. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Hi, everybody. This is Symphonic Elk, and I am back with the haul. And this is my 32nd haul. Three, two. My old age has made remembering very 
very difficult. But a little bit of research, and I figured it out. 32. So with this haul, I've got books from New Comic Book Day, a comic book convention, um, a couple of collections, very small ones that I got to look through. Some eBay purchases, some books that I ordered a long time ago that were store exclusives that uh, finally came in. Just a smattering of things all over the place from Silver Age books to the newest of new. So let's get started. So from New Comic Book Day, I bought the following books. I bought the Young Guns variant for the Black Widow book that came out, as I always do. Bought the Frank Cho uh, Harley Quinn book, number 44. Bought two copies of Aquaman 37, the Josh Middleton cover. I think this one's really good. It's not Batman, or excuse me, Batgirl 23 level. But what is? Uh, bought Skyward number one's premiere issue. It's apparently has been um, optioned for TV show, movie, some sort of thing. So I figured why not. Got two copies of the uh, Batman 49 art germ cover. Um, really, really like this This cover very nice then i picked up x-men gold the number 30 variant edition by j scott campbell as well as the classified variant j scott campbell cover um, i'm not going to spoil the secret if you want to look it up go ahead and then i got the warren luau variant cover for green lanterns 49 Really like uh, this guy's covers. Um, really do. Uh, so much so that I went back and bought uh, Green Lantern's 48, um, the cover B with his artwork, as well as some other work that he's done um, that I bought off of eBay. So, yep, good stuff. All right, so next we are going to go over some books that I got from a poor man's comics. Uh, so, yeah, I had a trade with a poor man's comics, uh, and this is what I traded for. This is comic scene number 31. It is a early Harley Quinn appearance. Technically predates Batman Adventures 12. Uh, just something that I did not have in my possession. So uh, I had a book that he wanted, and we made a trade. He also sent me a bunch of super, super cool uh, throw-ins. So, he gave me two copies of Adventures of Shoney's Big Boy, a Valentine and Christmas copy. He knows that I like holiday books. Um, turns out I also used to really like Shoney's. Um, I don't even know if they exist anymore. But growing up in the small town that I did, one of the few places uh, to eat that wasn't a mom and pop shop and granted those mom and pop shops are really great so I'm not talking anything bad against them was Shoney's and I love their breakfast bar when I was uh, a kid it's good stuff unfortunately Shoney's is no longer in the town that I grew up in and it is now one of my favorite Mexican restaurants so yeah there you go or really Tex-Mex I guess also sent me uh Mr. Lizard number one with a capsule that's pretty cool um he sent me Heroes Incorporated presents Canon uh, this was self-published by Wally Wood, and it represents one of the earliest independent comics. So, interesting. Uh, he sent me The War That Time Forgot, Josh Middleton cover from, uh, like I said, a poor man's comics. He sent me Elementals, Adam Hughes cover. Um, pretty awesome. And he sent me, I believe, the Capstone, an Art Germ variant cover. And it's pretty amazing that he sent me all of these books, and as big as my collection is, and some weird things, I actually didn't own a single one of them. So, uh, Poor Miss Comics, I really, really appreciate it. I know I'm leaving a book out that you sent me, but that was because it is my trivia question. I will show it uh, next week. So, yeah. Thanks a million. Uh, great channel. Check them out if you don't haven't already. I will put his information in the description. Um, definitely one of the first people um, that I connected with when I started doing these YouTube videos. And I, I really appreciate his support. I appreciate what he does for the community. Um, just an all-around good person. So, yeah. Thank you. Now, let's move on. Since I had so much stuff, we're not going to separate keys and covers. We're just going to go by indie books. Um, 
mostly, and then major Marvel and whatnot. All right, we're going to start with DC, because I'm having a hard time finding a place to put all those books. And so, this is a collection of stuff that I bought from dollar bins and whatever and whatnot. I uh, bought this out of a dollar bin. As I showed last week, I got Batman Incorporated number eight, uh, the second and third printings. It didn't actually have the first printing. Uh, this is it. This is the quote unquote death of Damian Wayne issue. Uh, got Wonder Woman uh, number 97. This is the Brian Boland Joker cover. Got Action Comics number 714. It's an iconic Joker cover. Uh, the joke's on you. The Joker appears in Metropolis. Uh, got another iconic Joker uh, Superman cover. This is by Jock. Uh, Joker live in Metropolis for one night only. Um, love the, the Jock covers. They're just great. This one's really good. Uh, definitely underrated Adventures of Superman book. Uh, got 52 Week 7. This is the first appearance of Kate Kane, who's Batwoman. I had all the other Week 52s. It's in a dollar bin. Really think the cover is, is quite nice. Uh, so you pick that up. Uh, also from the Dollar Man, got Action Comics uh, 595, the first appearance of the Silver Banshee. Uh, got Jeff Smith's uh, premiere issue on Shazam, big Jeff Smith fan. Uh, got Hawkman Found, it's just a dark metal tie in. I think I paid cover price for this. Might not be worth much, but it was. One of the Dark Knights metal tie-ins that I didn't own. Um, got this out of a dollar bin. Wonder Woman number 37. It's a David Finch cover. Really like it. To go with it, I also picked up the David Finch sketch variant of the same cover. It's a 1 in 50. And I picked up another David Finch sketch variant for Wonder Woman 40. Also a 1 in 50. Picked up Power Girl number 20. I believe this is also... Wow, cover. Um, but anyway, it's low print run, awesome cover. Um, as you may have seen if you watched the beginning of the video, uh, I picked up All Star Batman at number one from Forbidden Planet. This is a Ben Oliver variant. Ben Oliver variant. I think he's going to be one of the next uh, artists really to take off. Um, so yeah, I got two copies, one to give away. One to keep. Uh, got Mr. Miracle number four, the first appearance of Big Barda. Um, for some reason, I did not own this. And then I picked up Supergirl number fifty, the Josh Middleton one in ten variant. Oh, such a such a beautiful cover. Um, yeah, I was gonna say there aren't words, but there are words, and there are things like beautiful, awesome, really cool. Finally, getting the. Um, respect that it deserves as a cover and what not all right so next we will go to Marvel so uh, I was able to go through a collection of books and found this in there um, so just like this Atomic Farland cover. So this is the Amazing Spider-Man Skating on Thin Ice. Well, it's like a $5 book, but um, as you can see, there's cigarettes and drugs and alcohol. Um, it's a Wayne Gretzky fan and whatnot. But again, most importantly, Tom McFarlane cover. Um, Astonishing Spider-Man and Wolverine. I've got five and six. It's the uh, first appearance of Dark Phoenix Wolverine in a cameo, as well as the first full appearance. Um, no idea how this fits in with the character at the end of the Thor number one book that recently came out. Um, but I, I picked these up cheap and figured it was worth the risk. Um, actually, this is not a new book, but it's one that I found. I was, I'd be going through my, my Blu-ray collection and, and pulling out the um, digital copies and... Um, putting the information in and, and getting the digital copy in an attempt to then, you know, get rid of my Blu-rays um, just to free up some room in the house. And anyway, this came in one of them. It is a Marvel Custom Edition. It's not for resale. It includes X-Men 
Uncanny X-Men 141 and 142. Um, and it is a homage to Uncanny X-Men 142. And this is an In Hike Lee cover. So, yeah, I just bagged it, figured I'd show it. Uh, this came out of a dollar bin, Avenging Spider-Man number two. It's a variant, uh, Ed McGinnis variant. I just like the Red Hulk, Spider-Man, pretty cool. Got this out of a dollar bin, number five, second appearance of Omega Red, didn't own it. Got this one out, Superior Spider-Man number one, premiere issue. Uh, as well as this one, uh, Marvel premiere featuring Doctor Who. This is the first appearance of Doctor Who in U.S. comics. It's just a cool book in general. Also got this. I got a bunch of these, so these might be uh, giveaways for some people. Um, got Amazing Spider-Man, the Obama cameo. This is the second print. Um, yeah, a bunch of these were in dollar bins, so grab them. I uh, got Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur number 19. This is the regular cover, and it is the first appearance of Girl Moon as opposed to Moon Girl. I uh, picked up Dark Hawk number 50. I uh, got this for $3, I think. Um, it's the last issue, low print. I um, was surprised to find it that cheap. I uh, picked up Psylocke number 3, David Finch cover. I'm slowly but surely getting all of these um, limited series Psylocke issues. Uh, yeah, really nice. Really nice cover. I picked up uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider Man number 90. It's an early black costume. I, you know, with it is there's uh, the Marvel team up. There's ASM 252. There's Secret Wars, which came out, I think, a couple months later. All of these books are, quote unquote, the first appearance, the origin or whatever of the, the black costume. This is one of them. Uh, Five dollars. I figured why not? Didn't own it. Uh Picked up uh, Spider-Man number 12. This has got a Miles Gwen kiss. Um, after the uh, Spider-Verse um, movie trailer came out, which looks incredible. Definitely watch the trailer. Um, thought there might end up being some heat. Anyway, it's a cool cover. Book can still be easily had at cover price, um, even less. So yeah, it's worth picking up. Uh, picked up Peter Porker, the Spectacular Spider-Ham. This is the first appearance of Peter Porker. I uh, feel like Peter Porker might be in the Spider-Verse movie, so I figured I'd get this while I could for a cheap price. Um, picked up Hawkeye vs. Deadpool Zero, the Alamo City Comic Con exclusive variant. This is a possible cameo of Spider-Gwen and Lady Thor. Uh, the quick story behind it, this came out before Edge of Spider-Verse 2. Um, it has two kids dressed up um, in the Spider-Gwen and Lady Thor um, costumes. I don't really think it's considered a first appearance. I, I don't know. It's not an expensive book, so I figured it was worth it. Giving it a go. This is so Hawkeye versus Deadpool Zero. There's a regular cover. This looks pretty cool. This is the Alamo City variant. Uh, got Marvel Rising Alpha. This is the Stacy Lee variant cover. It's 1 in 25 in the first full appearance of Ember Quad. Um, looks super hot. Uh, pretty good cover. Um, people think Ember Quad is going to be a uh, really big character. So, eh, you know. Hope they're right. I uh, picked up Marvel Presents Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, number four. This is the first appearance of Nikki. It's most important in my mind. This is a price variant. Um, love the price variants. Usually when I get them, I try to get them to be either a, 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 sp a particularly key issue for some reason, like the Moon Knight, the first mo solo Moonlight, first Eternal uh, Eternals, whatnot. Uh, this one is mainly just because it is a super cool cover. Uh, picked up Deadpool. This is really technically Cable 25, but the last few issues of Cable were Deadpool Cables. Um, uh, not to be mistaken with the actual Cable and Deadpool comic book. Um, it's a Riot Life variant cover and is considered one of the lowest print runs of any of the Cable books. So this is an interesting story. This is Spider-Man number one. Uh, it is signed by Todd McFarlane, and this has his old signature. You can see it right here. It's not nearly as good as his uh, his more recent one. And uh, really, what this is is there was a uh, a signing at a comic book store in, in Seattle 
where he essentially sat down and signed a bunch of these. This is one of those ones. And you can tell, I'm not going to take it out, but if you flip it on the back, there's a little like spiderweb red stamp on it. This is also really interesting because it came with this, which is uh, Todd McFarlane's Image Comics, uh, his address and sent to the, to the guy I bought it from. Uh, as you can see, the December 30th, 1994 um, date stamp. So this is probably legit. Um, it's kind of a cool um, extra piece of, you know, uh, <clears throat> of, I don't know, information, whatever. Okay. Moving on to uh, indie books. So I got this for a dollar. Uh, Jim Lee's Death Blow, number one, new stand edition, uh, also a dollar, um, issue 50, Todd McFarlane cover. Um, these were also, I think, two, the two dollars maybe. Um, and it's just uh, early or mid spawn 151, 152, 153, 154, 155, 157. 158. So these were all uh, just very low print run spawn books. I found this for a dollar. This is the first print of Bone number 10 with uh, the cow race. It's an iconic issue, iconic cover. Um, picked up Spawn 227, uh, the homage to ASM 30. It's a Todd McFarlane cover. Really cool. Uh, picked up Gen 13 number 2, uh, new stand. Also the first appearance of Rainmaker. Uh, Gen 13 number 3 newsstand. Uh, picked up a Wildcats number 2 newsstand. Uh, then I found these for a dollar, and that's those are great. Um, so these, the last run of issues from Scud the Disposable Assassin have a very low print run and are actually worth a decent amount of money. Um, so I found these. So this is Scud, the Disposable Assassin number 21. This is the first print. Uh, if you looked at my last haul, uh, there was a Scud issue in it, and uh, it was number 21 as well. Had some um, some writing from Asia. I don't know if it was kanji or, or, or you know whatever it was. Um, this is the first print. I uh, got number 22, number 23, and these are all a dollar. 24. That was pretty great. Uh, also. Ordered Hit Girl, number one, the Ben Oliver Forbidden Planet variant covers. Uh, didn't think they were as good as the Batman one, but what is? I uh, found another Jason versus Leatherface. This issue is a uh, much better condition than the one that I, um, I showed a couple weeks ago. So I will be keeping this one in my collection and giving the other uh, Jason versus Leatherface number one away in one of my trivia questions. All right, got some Adam Hughes covers here. Uh, Voodoo number four and number three. Got these for two dollars a piece. Uh, Vengeance of Vampirilla number six was actually given this. Um, Adam Hughes cover, pretty good stuff. Uh, Liberty Meadows, I think this is 20, 23 or 14, oh, man. Can't remember. But anyway, this is a uh, Adam Hughes uh, Liberty Meadows cover. Really, really cool. Uh, got Joe Psycho and Moo Frog. This is an early Ethan Van Skyver book. Uh, got Art Germs Wonderland number 25. I uh, got Bloodshot number two. This is the first appearance of Chainsaw. It's a cameo. Got Magnus Robot Fighter number 64. It is a uh, last issue, hard to find, one of the lowest uh, Valiant print runs. I picked up the Tyler Kirkham Virgin variant for, um, for Magic. Um, got Thundercats versus Battle of the Planets. The J. Scott Campbell cover. I uh, found this in a dollar bin. This is uh, Dark Horse Presents Annual 1998. I believe it is the first appearance of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in comics. Cool Hellboy cover. Found another Milk and Cheese. Um, was asked to, again, like I said at the beginning, go to my buddy's store, runs board games, sells board games and stuff. And this is part of the collection that I looked through a week ago. 
Um, but this was like the second part that the guy brought by. There was nothing in the collection with the exception of uh, this milk and cheese first print number one. It is my second copy, um, so I will be putting one of my copies probably either up for sale or in one of my um, bigger, uh, maybe my 500 subscriber contests. We'll see. Uh, also picked up Danger Girl number two. This is the Smoking Gun variant. Uh, J. Scott Campbell cover, not the ruby red one, unfortunately, but still commands quite a few dollars and is super cool. All right, getting close to the end. So, here are a few more books. Um, got Spawn, the Todd McFarlane variant cover. This is black and white, approximately 3,000 print run. Uh, this is a couple hundred dollars, and I found it in a collection yesterday, so super excited about that. Um, and I had to pay for it. Not, I mean, I paid well under, um, you know, retail, but still, it was, you know, I was honest with the person I was looking through. Uh, also got Cyber Frog number one in that collection. This is the Ultra Violent variant. So this is from Harris. There were two covers. Uh, this cover essentially doesn't exist on eBay. Um, someone just did put one up and it's starting bid at 80 and someone's already bid that. Um, so yeah, found two of these, uh, purchased one and, uh, you know, pretty cool. Uh, picked up the Amazing Spider-Man 800 Mike Mayhew variant cover. Uh, this is the modern trade dress and it was limited to 800 copies. Pretty cool. Uh, picked up Wolverine. This is the 1 in 100 Third Claw variant. Also the first appearance of Dakin, his son. Been looking for that for a while. Picked up Ultimate Spider-Man number one. This is the first book in the Ultimate Universe and with a retailer incentive. As you know, if you've watched my videos, Ultimate Spider-Man number one is my favorite comic book of all time. Um, so I'm now trying to go through and get some of the different variants at the Dynamic Forces, the Target exclusive. Um, and, and this was the uh, white retailer incentive variant. I got a second copy of Journey into Mystery number 102. It's the first appearance of Hela, Sif, and Baldar. Um, I have already owned an issue of this, but it has a chunk of the cover ripped out of it. So found this for a good price and picked it up. Picked up Detective Comics uh, 298. This is the first appearance of the Silver Age Clayface. And this book has gone up a lot recently. Um, I was lucky to have a friend who found it. Um, and, and he gave it to me for a good deal, along with the, the uh, Journey into Mystery 102. Um, so yeah, it's it, important to make connections and, you know, become friends with these guys who go out and are, you know, dig through collections because you, uh, you can get good deals and they'll hold books for you. And yeah, don't be a jackass, I guess is the, the more of the story. Uh, speaking of milk and cheese, before this was uh, Greed number six, it is the first appearance of milk and cheese. Um, yeah, got this for super cheap again from another guy I know through the comic community. Um, he knew that I'm into milk and cheese, and uh, yeah, I was uh, super excited for this. All right, three more books. None of them are that impressive, but they're the ones that are graded. So like I said earlier, um, there were some store exclusives that I bought a while back when I was too into store exclusives, um, and I got some of them guaranteed 9.8. Hate that process because it takes the best comics out of the ones that go out to everybody else, but here they are. So got uh, 9.8 of Thanos 13, the second printing, or no, the third printing. Um, I bought this mostly because it had um, Cosmic Ghost Rider on the cover and thought that in the end might be important. Who knows? Um, got Weapon H number one, one of the store variants. I don't know who cares why I got it. And uh, Thanos number 15, the uh, origin of Cosmic Ghost Rider. And this is the third or second printing, second printing. Uh, all 9.8s, uh, who cares, really. Anyway, all right, whew, that is, that's a lot of books. So, do the trivia, send it to elk.prizes at gmail.com, and uh, yeah, have a good one. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, thanks for spending a little bit of your day with me, and yeah, I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.